right? If you don't know, you're about to know right now. You're about to learn education. I'm Quindell Evans, bluepoetry.com. And right now, I'm here with the lovely Diane Carter. Yes. Diane Carter, who is the CEO and founder of Made With Love Oils. And she makes beauty supplies, you know, specifically that's good for the, the body, the, the hair, that's actually good for you. You know, a lot of the stuff that we get in these um, stores or get from certain people or certain companies have a lot of chemicals in it. We gotta be aware of it, you know, especially as us black people who gotta be, we're very sensitive to these things. And a lot of times we get used to it, even though it's, we know it's bad for us. And I don't know if y'all know, like a lot of the stuff causes cancers. A lot of the chemicals that they put in these products causes cancer. So you want to get some safe products. Um, so I support the artist, the, the, the entrepreneur right here, because I like to buy some hair growth oil since I cut my locks. I'm going to get my fro right and get some beard oil because I want the Rick Ross, you feel me? I want to get the Rick Ross beard. I, right now I got the struggling joint, but I ain't gonna hold you since I was using the beard oil that I buy from her. It's spots that was bald that's getting hair. You know, literally it was, I, it was patched like it was go hair, then it would stop, start hair, and then I used the oil and then the spots is coming in. So I'm seeing a lot of progress. Um, so I definitely support the entrepreneur. Um, like I said, my name is Quindell Evans, you know, bluepoetry.com, that's the brand. Would you like to introduce yourself, say a yes. few things? Sure, my name is Diane Carter, like you said. I'm the founder of Made With Love Oils. I started back in 2013 for a lot of the reasons that you just explained, um, primarily being the amount of chemicals that um, are found in natural uh, products for the hair and the skin. I kind of wanted to eliminate that, um, especially when, you know, your skin is your biggest organ and anything you put on it goes directly into your bloodstream. And like you said, it causes cancers, all types of neurotoxins. So you have got to be really conscious about what you put on your skin. So that is one of the primary reasons why um, I started this. Um, and we're here right now at um, Jeffrey's Beauty Supply which is uh, one of the first uh, black-owned beauty supply stores to open up here in Brooklyn. And they actually do carry uh, a few of my products here for uh, a little over a, a year or so. Um, so I'm really happy to be here um, and doing this interview in this establishment because it means a lot to me and my company um, because this was actually the first store to carry my products. So they definitely hold a big significance in my business and my life personally. Um, and you're, um, you're from Flatbush? I live in Flatbush. Where are you um, from now? From Red Hook, Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, um, born and raised in Brooklyn my whole life. I moved, moved to Flatbush about seven years ago. Okay, so you're not really from here, you just I don't represent Flatbush. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, this is Brownsville, right? Yeah, this, was, this, this was, is this, Brownsville. This is Brownsville, this is actually, where I grew up, it's ironic, you know. Um, family out here. Yeah, my mom's live here, and like I never seen this John. but this is in the cut. You feel me? I guess like the people on this side of Brownville, we like up the hill. Yeah. So like the people up the hill, Ocean Hill, we know about this, you know. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they get some good, you know, customers because black people we we. You know what I'm saying? Beauty supplies are made for us. You feel me? Like, we the ones who support beauty supplies the most. We spend so much money a year annually exactly. on beauty supplies. So I'm and sure they, they market to I'm sure they, specifically black people. A lot of the beauty supply stores mm -hmm. market and, black, to black people. So you mentioned that, um, you mentioned that, um, this is one of the first stores. Matter of fact, let me pick back on that right there. You said they market to black people. Um, a lot of the companies that I just make mean these. in general, yeah. Like a lot of the companies and a lot of the beauty supply stores, like if you look out the windows outside, um, they mark like all the especially the hair care because that's probably the biggest drive in a lot of beauty supplies is the hair care. And those are all primarily pushed upon, you know, the urban market and right. black people. So. so 
would you feel like, you know, I'm gonna ask you two questions. Um, one, like, earlier you said that a lot of the natural products, natural, natural hair products and beauty supply products have chemicals in it. Um, do you consider that natural or like, what is your definition of natural? It's like natural, you know, like natural product. You know, is natural product a good thing? Is, or we should be like, kind of like, you know, caution, caution everyone we're looking at natural products and be more skeptical and be like, everything that says natural on it is not necessarily good for you. Um, that's the first part of the question. And two is like, black natural different from other naturals because you just mentioned how they market, you know, and, and, and target us through yeah. marketing. But it's like, is the stuff that might be targeting us, they might say it's good for your hair, is it like good for black hair? If black natural is different from uh, the other natural. Right. So I guess to answer the first part of the question, I feel like as far as natural products, you should always be cautious because when it comes to marketing, especially with these big brands, when it comes to marketing hair care, it'll say natural ingredients or it may say with shea butter. But if you look at the back of the list, shea butter is like one of the very last ingredients and then it's filled with a bunch of chemicals outside right. of that. So they make it seem as if it's good for you because it has shea butter or whatever. But it's important to read the labels because you'll get a better idea of what is actually in the products. Um, like I said, when it says natural, natural can be anything. There's like lotions and things that have I don't know the scientific name, but it's basically urine, which is technically natural, right? But it's in- Urine is natural. <laughs> right? I mean, technically it's natural, but it's in some of the lotions and even the hair care. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's natural, but do you really want that? Or even like certain types of stem cells from certain animals and mm -hmm. things like that that are technically natural, but it's not, you know, something that you would want to have on your hair or skin. So it's definitely important to, um, know what you're putting on your body and then on top of that I, I do feel like with the black natural market they do market things that are good I feel like now at least within the last five years or so there's a big thing about marketing towards like black hair in itself a lot of brands like Pantene that have never ever before marketed towards people with natural textured hair now have a whole line dedicated to that um, and even with that they're still loaded with chemicals but right. they're marketed to us people and um, and it's still the same thing it's just they changed the labels they made it oh this is like if you go to Target they have a whole ethnic section now right. you know that's dedicated to ethnic hair so it's it's a lot of it is just about marketing you know because you know that there's a lot of money in the black beauty supply business so mm -hmm. they market they want to get our money um, I'm um, I'm reading a book right now called um, it's old too um, called um, talking dollars and making sense by uh, Brooke Stevens um, she's an African-American it's like a wealth the subtitle is a wealth building guide for African-Americans and it talks about how, like, you know, since the 70s, since the late 70s, mm -hmm. you know, since the late 70s when they realized how much, you know, black people were making, like, you know, the census, they realized when black people were becoming more middle class and wealthy and they were actually getting this money, they started to market to us to get our money. Like, they would do whatever they can to get our money. Um, and to another keep thing. Us in a certain bracket, like, to keep us poor, pretty much. Right. What is this? Yeah, maybe to keep us poor, but just to make sure they getting our money from like if I'm a company, you know, and I'm you know, and I'm have access to a census and I'm able to realize the income of certain you know, certain ethnicities, I might be like, Hold on, I ain't getting no Indian money and they getting a lot of money, so let me go market to them and get some of that you know, get some of that money. So it's not me necessarily trying to keep them poor, which I'm sure we could get into all of the ways they are keeping us down through through um, you know different mediums of, of of business and marketing and stuff like that, but another thing is um you said like you know made with shea butter, but it's probably the last ingredient. What I notice on 
a lot of the um, beauty supply products is that it would say they have two different types of ingredients, active and inactive. Right. So I be it's I'm confused. Like it might be, if it's shea butter, but it's inactive. Does that even mean anything? Like is this like so? It's just shea butter for no reason. It's like it's inactive. It's not. I'm not getting the nutrients that shea butter is right. really even providing in the first place. Exactly. So I noticed that too. You know, um, and the second part of the question was like, is black natural different from, you know, like other natural? It's like, do you make products specifically for any hair, or you think like, you know, black people should be your like you know your your target audience because they their hair will benefit off it mostly you know because i feel like a lot of times i mean nowadays it's becoming more trendy to like they say go natural whatever that means but like that would mean like i guess not put put like certain perms or 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 he and whatever like certain certain hair process would be different the way you do your hair would be different you see a lot of girls rocking afros and just curls you know right. and like keeping it i guess natural do you feel like the products that these other companies are saying that's natural and, and giving to blacks or, or promoting and marketing to blacks are promoting more straighten your hair type products blacks you know black straighten your hair or get your hair permed or weave out and stuff like that like are these products that are more towards they're promoting they're promoting to us and marketing to us for us to go natural and rock our natural hair or or do you feel like they're promoting stuff to you know change up our hair and not do what's, what's natural with our hair i mean i feel like that has changed over time like i feel like in the 90s having straight hair was like almost a must-have for <clears throat> for like everyone like I, I just remember like in the 90s growing up, everybody had perms or like different styles that would require you to have straight hair. Um, and that was the norm. Everybody had perms, everybody straightened their hair. And I think at the time, that's what all of the products were geared towards, just maintaining that type of hair. Um, perming it, what was that? Um, like perfect for perm, that was like a big thing in the 90s. Everybody used it to shine their hair and keep it straight. Um, but I feel like as, I guess, the, as the market began to shift and people started to embrace their natural hair more, I feel like that's when a lot of these companies kind of changed their, the way they market to us. Now, you know, like I was saying, they have products now that are more geared towards maintaining natural hair. Um, and like I said, a lot of them are still filled with a lot of chemicals, but they are now, they're aware that people are trying to do the natural thing and they're promoting all different types of products to help maintain as far as like shampoos, cold washes, uh, hair growth oils and um, hair max treatments. It's like an array of different products um, that could all essentially do the same thing, but because there's a market there, they want to kind of like, you know, get ahead of the market and just have more of a variety of things to kind of like pull more into their um, to their income stream by having a bigger product variety uh, for products that could essentially all do the same thing. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said you started this in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. So you about to be six years in the game right now, from two thousand nineteen. Yeah. And what were you doing before that? I was actually um, working in retail. I did a lot of retail. Um, but directly before this, I was actually working at Whole Foods um, in the city. I actually worked there for nine years before I started doing this. And when I was there, I did a lot of different things. But one of the things that I did that stood out the most was I actually used to do like health education classes. I used to teach um, health education to the new hires. Um, to kind of teach them about the culture of Whole Foods and why, you know, eating natural and having natural products was important. And that's kind of how I began to, like, learn about why it was important. And it was that that kind of, like, changed my whole mindset. And I became very aware of what I was eating and what I was putting onto my body. Anytime I would consider buying something, the first thing I would do is turn it over to look at the ingredients. And that was, like, standard for everything that, you know, I, need, I wanted to purchase. Um, 
And then um, around that time, 2013, I actually hurt myself at work and I was out of work for a few months. And so just me being me and trying to keep myself busy, I kind of started this as uh, a hobby at home, just, you know, putting things together. And then when I came back to work, you know, people would be like, oh, your hair looks good. What do you do? Or what do you put in it? And I'd be like, oh, this is some stuff that I made. And they're like, oh, could you bring me some? I'll pay you. And that's kind of like how the business was born, so to speak. Okay. And, you know, fast forward, you know, what I would always do is just always research and trying out different recipes and different um, techniques for the hair. Um, and that would help me create products that I needed for certain styles and things like that. And that's kind of like how this really all started. And um, and then there would be people who would be like, oh, you make stuff, right? I need something for this. Could you put something together for me? And then, you know, I would go back and do some research. And I'd be like, okay, I know exactly what I need to do for this. And then that's kind of like how new products became a thing too. Um, and I think at this point I have about maybe 30 different products. Who was your first product? It was actually the hair growth serum. The hair growth? That's what you was doing <laughs> yeah. with yours? You was just trying to make your hair grow so you make something for yourself? Yeah. Oh, God, that's what's up. And, um, so, like, how was, what's, what's your hair story? Like, what's, it's funny because I went, I used to go to this event called Hair Story. You heard of Hair Story? I feel like I have. Sorry, it was, um, it was, Wow, um, because you know, like the conscious community has like a certain group of people that's always doing certain events. Right. Um, and you know about you have products in Nicholas Brooklyn. No, not yet. Oh yeah, not okay. Yet, not yet. But yeah, you know they'll hold you down. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Brooklyn. Um, but Hair Story was. I remember the, I went to Hair Story twice. I don't know how many times they held it, but it was held in. The first time was in Bed Stuy. And then the second time it was in, like, the borderline, like right there on Fulton and like Notion. So that's like, yeah, the tip of both. Um, mm -hmm. And it was done by a friend of mine called Priscilla, and um, I don't know if you know Priscilla and Preston. They got a garden. Of course, those are my people, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they the ones who did the hair story. Oh. Priscilla, okay. oh, you've been there at the garden. I remember you was been there yeah. last year, like October, and they was doing that series. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So Priscilla used to do the hair story, and oh, with the, the with the other girl who does the braiding. Mm -hmm, with the twin. Right, that's what. Okay, right. right okay, because I know I heard of it. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. I so like, and at the at the hair story <laughs> event, they used to show this documentary about different girls and their hair stories. You know, some mm -hmm. of them would go bald, some of them would talk about why they were natural, or you know, why they have the hair, why they wear their hair a certain way, and stories and stuff like that and um what people used to do there would tell their hair story like you know like anybody would go around and tell their hair story and you have different people you know some people would come there with weave and some people come there with straight hairs and you know most people would come natural because that's that kind of community but so like what's your hair story like have you always been on your like natural wave have you been you know with when you were young you know did your mom make you straighten your hair weave it would you Box braids, like what was, your, what was your hair? What's your hair story? Like, how did you become, you know, like, how did you become? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You said you was out of work and you experimented and made some hair growth for you. Like, so that means at that time you were health conscious, maybe because of the the classes you were teaching. But what about prior to that? Like, what's your hair story? Well, my mom, like, just growing up in general, she never let us do anything with our hair. We were not able to perm it. We couldn't straighten it um, because she was aware of like the effect that it could do. Although she used to perm her own hair and yeah. stuff, but she was like, "You guys are not gonna perm your hair." But so she would just we would just rock little ponytails and things like that. Um, and then I guess like when I became a teenager um, and she like stopped doing her hair, then uh, I got this little like kind of like a flat iron thing, and I used to kind of like flat iron my own hair and I used to go get washing sets and things like that. Um, not really ever perming my hair until probably when I was like 22, 23, something like that. Um, 
I don't know why I decided to do it. I think maybe for the convenience of just um, because I would get my washing sets done often, like every two weeks or so, just so it would be easier, faster. Um, I had decided to do a perm. Um, but then after that, I probably had it for like a year and then I was like, yeah, this is not for me anymore. So, because um, I actually did like my natural hair. So um, I stopped perming it, although I was still getting washing sets, I was still getting straightened. Um, <clears throat> but eventually I realized that getting your hair straightened could be just as damaging as having a perm. And when I finally made that connection, then it was like, okay, I can't. So I actually reduced the amount that I would get it. I would do it maybe twice a year um, at that point. And as of right now, um, I would say it's been a good two and a half years since I straightened my hair. I just decided to just be done with it all the way. And I just feel like it is a lot healthier for the hair because the heat damage is irreversible. Once you get that damage, there's really nothing you can do besides either cut it off or live with it. Um, and the damage can lead to shedding, thinning, um, things that I didn't want for my hair, especially if you're nourishing your hair and your scalp with, you know, good quality products. The last thing you want to do is add damage that's going to kind of like take away what you're right. doing. So what it sounds like to me is that like, you, you, you really like, I feel like I got a friend who was, um, who mom grew up in the conscious community and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he grew up in a health conscious, like a health conscious, meaning the way, the way they eat, like a health conscious yeah. household. So he was restricted from eating certain things. Mm -hmm. Once he got older, he was just now, you know, and it's funny, you know, his mother's yeah. still health conscious, but he, because mm -hmm. he, it's that mindset of like my mom is making me right. eat this and my mom don't want me to eat that. So whenever you become a teenager and that's the rebellious age, you'll be able to yeah. be on your own. You kind of feel like you know everything, you know. Right. I was a teenager, I felt like it was it. Like I know what I need to know. And that's how we feel as teenagers and we begin to do things we kind of know we're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But it's just the sake of I have to make my, I have to feel like I make my own decisions. Right. That's how um, you grow. Right. So that's what it felt like. It felt like, you know, you wanted to just, like, do it because you couldn't, and now you can kind of vibe. Like, I want to, and my mom wouldn't approve, approve, appreciate it or approve of it, but if I can make my own decisions now, and, you know, when you're a teenager, you get to argue now a little more, and you actually yeah. get to, you know, like, state your claim and make decisions that your parents wouldn't agree with, but would still kind of be like, I don't agree with it, but okay, you're going to learn kind of vibe. Right. So, like, you know, I think we do that, like we know we're doing things that necessarily aren't good, so you went through your phase of like, all right, like, this, I'm experimenting with my hair because I never could, you know? Right. And when, it, when the experiment was over, you came out on a, on a you know, at least it was over, because some people right. probably, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. never, you know, some people, I know females who just, you know, same vibe, like their parents never allowed them to straighten or perm their hair. Like my little sister, but when she got older, she do whatever she went with her hair. Yeah. So it's just like, it's, I think that's what it is. I think, you know, you, you, you went through your phase, but I'm glad that, you know, you, you came out because you provided us. And I think, let me not even say I think, like why did you, did you feel like if you were, Wash and set and straighten your hair, you know, and providing this heat to your hair. Do you feel like you was a hypocrite providing these products and stuff? Like, is this, or was it just like a personal choice? No, it wasn't that because, you know, one of the main purposes of the hair growth serum is to kind of like strengthen the hair at the roots, promote growth. So, straightening your hair, I actually have a lot of clients who use it who do straighten and or perm their hair, but they use it strictly for, you know, growing their hair but I just felt you know my ultimate goal is to have optimal health as far as my hair and I know that straightening it wasn't going to get it to that point um, so that was kind of the personal reason why I stopped and then it's just like now that I understand that connection between you know the heat damage and you know 
it's like now I understand why my mom never let us do that. Okay. And I just feel like I wish I knew that sooner or learned or at least, you know, understood that sooner because then it would have taken away that whole time of me applying all that damage and stuff to my hair. So you worked at Whole Foods, you was teaching <laughs> teaching classes on how um so you, it sounds like to me you might know some some things, you know. So I got some questions. Okay. Um, do you feel or do you know of any foods that you can eat that could promote healthy hair? Um. Yeah. Or there drinks are, or fruits. Whatever. I know. Um. Like a lot of B vitamins. Um. Like the B complex, the six, the twelve. <clears throat> those all help with like hair, skin, nails. Um. As far as like specifically fruits and vegetables, gooseberry is actually really good. Gooseberry oil, they also call amla. Um, they actually have like the berries itself, they have the powder, um, sometimes they have the juice depending on like where you go. Um, but that actually helps internally with um, promoting growth. Um, what else? I mean, just in general, always drinking lots of water also helps with that. Um, just lots of greens. Honestly, that all helps just keep the skin clear. It keeps um, your hair healthy too. There, because there are ways to help from inside too. You know, the hair growth serum will help, of course. Um, but it's always important to do from the inside. Like flax seeds um, is actually really good. It's high in omegas, which are also good for um, promoting hair growth and healthy skin. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you, you um you mentioned how you know you I like your hair story how you know I don't know a lot of I know quite I know just a few maybe one or two maybe a handful of people who mom wouldn't let them do things you know um, I know a lot of people who moms would be straightening people's hair would be hot combing it you know and you know permanent for them and. You don't know all the different types of chemicals, you know. I remember just like growing up, I got six sisters, wow. and I just remember smelling the perm. I still remember the smell <laughs> of the perm right now. I just remember seeing them putting in their head and holding it till it burned, and then yeah. you know, all of that stuff. Um, yeah. So, and like, you know, I think what I think it probably is the fact that it's the norm, kind of like people do it because it's. You know, people do it because everyone's doing it. It's like their thing. You know, yeah. you go to school and you're a child and like, girl has a different hair. You're like, oh, what do you do with your hair? I put this blah, blah, blah chemical in it. And then everybody would have to go and call it, but they're going to go, I put this in there. And then, yeah. and then somebody else would want to try it and stuff like that. Um, but your hair story is rare because not a lot of people is going to, especially in, in, like, you know, black neighborhoods, not a lot of people is gonna be health conscious in that way. You know, we're just like doing whatever to our hair, you know? But um, what's your what's your perspective on weave? Do you feel like weave is like, do you have, um, because I feel like personally, me, you know, as a black man, I grew up in Brownsville, projects. I like it all, like I like girls who got natural hair, I like the weave, the box braids, the perm, I know the detriment of certain chemicals in the hair, but I still like to see different hairstyles, you feel me, yeah. personally, you feel me? I'm not just like, oh, but girl, like natural, I can't deal with it, it's like, yeah. nah, like, you know, because she might not, you know, she might change, and girls do a lot of different things with their hair all the time, you know? I mean, might just go straight bald, I've seen girls go straight bald, you know, girls run around here with haircuts and stuff like that, but what's your... What's your view on weave? Do you feel like you have products for people with weaves too? Do you feel like you have products for people who don't have natural hair as well? Do, do your products range for a different, you know, demographic of people? Yeah, so it, it definitely does. Um, and as, I mean, as far as like how I feel, I mean, I, it's all freedom of choice. Um, people who wear weaves, that doesn't necessarily mean that their hair is not healthy or natural. Um, actually, 
Ashley Reed was considered like a protective hairstyle. You know, people would braid their own natural hair and then they would have the weave sewn in. So their own hair is actually being protected. And I actually do have um, a lot of clients who wear weaves. Actually, there's um, probably less than a mile from here on Alabama and Atlantic, there's a weave shop that actually carries my conditioner and she actually uses it on people who are getting installations in their hair and they who have natural hair or maybe not, but because it helps to soften the hair. So they use the conditioners under the weave. So, you know, as far as, you know, the way my products work, they actually work well for all different types of hair, um, not just ne necessarily natural. Um, and then, like I said, the hair growth serum is good for anyone who just wants to experience some growth in their hair. Um, and I think that's the beauty of, you know, the, my products because they can um, accommodate all different types of hair. Um, and it's just a freedom of choice. Weaves are not bad. It's not, you know, it's just really a way to protect your hair the way that I look at it. Um, I've never had one. I just feel like I have too much hair to cover up <laughs> under a weave. Right. But I don't, you know, I know plenty of people who wear them all the time and they have very healthy hair. But actually, like your hair is pretty long. Um, I was actually with a girl whose hair was long, like yours, but she still wore weaves. And it was like, what do you, I don't know. But like people have different choices, you yeah. know, people have different preferences and stuff like that. And I was just like, yo, what? It's just a choice. People, like honestly, like, like I said, I've never had weaves before, but every time like I come in here, for example, I'm always like looking at all their wigs and I'm like, man, that looks nice. <laughs> I can have straight hair without actually straightening my own hair. Like, you right. know, so it's like something that I think about because it's good just to have that versatility. I think with a lot of women, they like, they don't like to have the same hairstyle all the time. They want to have that change and necessarily don't want to have to jeopardize the health of their hair to achieve that. So, you know, I think that's where we kind of like change the game for them because they can kind of have the look they want without you know, adding the perms or doing the straightening, you know, to the hair. Right. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to know your perspective on weave. I'm not against it. I'm not against any style at all. Um, but I do want people to know the, the like, the, the terms and conditions that come with certain chemicals, certain products they put in their hair, you know, in certain ways they're treating their hair. And I do want people to be aware of it. Um, you know, I'm a very health conscious guy. I've probably been this way. I've always, I remember being young, like literally like probably eight years old. And I remember like trying not to eat certain things. Like, I remember trying to take care of myself in a certain way. Um, you know, I wasn't always successful though, but I remember just like always thinking about it, you know? And I was thinking about that today. Like, like I think the people who you know, because I just came from the roti shop, and, like, the dude ain't have no, like, no veggies. And I'm just like, bro, I don't eat meat. Like, you know, like, what veggies can you put in this, this roti for me? And then he's like, well, we got chana, we got cabbage, and we got, um, I don't remember. What else he said? I just remember the chana. When he said cabbage, I was just like, I don't want nothing. Just put the china in there and let me get out of here. Like, um, cause I'm just not with the cabbage. It's like, I don't know, it's not cool cabbage. But when he put it in there, I remember just thinking like, and he was, he, he was like, I don't know how you could do it when he was making this. I don't know how you could do this. Like, you don't eat no meat. Like, ain't no way I could not eat no meat. And I'm just like, you know, I just, I think it's, I, I told him what I said was, when I went, when I, when I lived by myself, the first time I got my own crib and I started cooking, it was over. I knew I couldn't eat meat because I had to clean chicken and fish. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm gagging. So, like, yeah. I think that's what did it for me. I'm not, like, watching, I'm not, like, animal cruelty. I, I don't yeah. care. Like, kill them. For me, I would if I could, but I can't eat them because I'm thinking about cleaning it. It's over. It scarred me. So, yeah. like, I'm not, like, one of those, like, animal cruelty. We should have killed it. And I'm not one of those dudes. Yeah. I'm more just, like, I would. If I had the audacity to have my own cow or chicken and I could kill it and actually clean it, I just, because I like to be hands-on, but because I can't be hands-on without feeling disgusted, then I can't eat meat. So like, in that way, I'm very health conscious in that way. I remember 
like you know in every way in every way i like to think about what i'm putting on my on my body i like to think about what i'm putting on my skin I like to think about what i'm putting on my hair you know but it's not my you know expertise to talk about hair you know my expertise is like i like to do music and poetry that's my expertise poetry so i could teach you about poetry and words and how they come together but I might want to treat my hair good, but I'm gonna just I'm gonna ask people questions who specialize in that to gain my knowledge instead of going around trying to teach people. You know, cause my mom still do perms, and I just be like, mom, like, you know that, like, I mean, but I can't really tell that. You know, she can't take that from the poet. Like, yeah. what are you talking about poet? Like, you can't. So like, I feel like that's in general though. I feel like a lot of parents are like, well, you can't tell me anything. Like, yeah. My mom was the same way, you can't tell me nothing. She was like, I've been doing this for so long, like, I know what I'm doing, don't worry about it. Okay. Kind of thing, yeah. <clears throat> so before we go, you know, I just want to say thank you for, you know, appearing on the Blue Poetry Podcast. Thank and you for me. No doubt. Because I think it's important for, um, for us to promote each other and market each other. Um, I definitely appreciate you and your products, you know, thank keep you. it up. One one other question though. You mentioned that like I actually before you was doing this, who were you doing? You said you was doing retail. So like is this full time now? Like you you good like that? Like the <laughs> neighbor love all you is just is holding you down to the point where it's like I don't need to work retail anymore? Yeah, pretty much. Um actually stopped working at Whole Foods in twenty fifteen and um at that point I've kinda like started doing this full time. Actually, um, what I was doing is I was doing a lot of uh, events. I would find out about different vending events happening, I would do that. And then in 2016, in the spring, I started doing street vending like on a daily basis. Like I would be downtown on Fulton Street um, by Fulton and Elm, almost six days a week, um, depending on the weather. And I would be out there for 10 or more hours a day um, just promoting my products even if you know people are not buying they're trying it out you know I'm sending them home with cards and things you know material to look at um, and I think that was a big help um, because in 2017 um, I didn't go out as much but I noticed that I had an increase in my online sales because and a lot of them were from like people in the Brooklyn, Queens. So I know it's people that, you know, have either tried my products or bought from me on Fulton Street. Um, and then in the uh, fall of 2017, that's kind of when I got my products in uh, the store here. And even at that point, um, it was an even bigger increase because, you know, the way they helped push and market, you know, my products, um, it actually increased my um, online sales. Um, and also, as far as like having interest from other uh, beauty supply stores. So as of right now, I'm in um, five different um, supply stores here. Um, the one that we spoke about, the Leaf Shop on Alabama, um, in um, Parma Heights, Ohio, Georgia. And then there's another online um, beauty um, shop that carries my products also. Okay, so you're expanding. You know, so I'm, I'm proud of that. You know, you. definitely happy to hear that. You know, you're expanding. I remember the first time I got your product was that um was that the Black um, Lady Theater, huh? Yeah, is that the Black Lady? I can't remember the name of the event. It was a uh, Q Vessels event. Right. Q was the event. Um, him and the Air guy, and the Air. They had an event. That was like, that was like last. Was it, was it 2016? I feel like, whoa, like time flies. It yeah. was 2016, like the first week of December. I remember it was cool. Okay. I think it was December. Yeah, I think it was. Like the first week, because it was like the week after Thanksgiving. It was uh, it was the following weekend. Like okay. this week. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> was, actually, you're right. <laughs> Word. So <laughs> it yeah, was the yeah. week after Thanksgiving. I remember specifically because. I remember, you know, I just remember that that time period very um, clearly. Um, 
Yeah, it was a week after Thanksgiving. I think it was on a Saturday or a Sunday. I know it was on a weekend. Yeah. Or maybe a Friday. I don't know. But it was on a weekend. I think it was a Saturday. Right. Yeah. And it was a like a vendors event. And they had performances. And I was performing there. Yeah, I and remember you performed with a couple other people. Um, I believe Rebel Jones performed mm -hmm. and some other people. I remember I was broke. Like, I had nada. Literally, I think I had like $4 in my pocket. But... I remember I had my poetry card, and I traded a card for the bed or even. Yeah. <laughs> and when I literally, like, I remember, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't using it consecutively, though. I don't know why. I don't know what was going on. But um, I wasn't using it all the time. But I just remember, like, applying it here and there. And I remember like certain spots in my bed was like actually falling through. Like this whole area right here was bald. Like this whole, you can see how it's like faded. Like this whole area didn't have nothing. And I remember like rubbing the hair a lot and then like it growing. And the second bottle I bought from you, I still have it again one day. I was tight, like I spilled it. <laughs> <laughs> like I was using it and I spilled it and like I was tight, but I was using it every day. And then, like, I remember, and then, then things started growing. Then, like, the little hair that was showing actually was getting longer. So I see my beard being full one day. I appreciate your beard on you. And I remember just, like, I, like I'm like i going to support her. I wanted to, like, you know, help you, um, like, get sales, too. And we spoke about that. Yeah. I definitely want to see how we could do that. Um, maybe not carry the products, but kind of like a, a cold thing. Um, yeah, like we can a, definitely work that out. Yeah, because I think, um, I, I mean, I think personally I've been working on, you know, like branding myself more and selling certain products. And, like, I think I got that trust now with, with myself and also with my um, with my network, like my followers, the people who follow me, right? I have trust in me now because I trust myself. But um, before we go, you know, I need you to say two things. One, one thing that made you smile today, and you know what the affirmation is. Mm -hmm. And one affirmation. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's see. One thing that made me smile today. It can't be. I woke up. You know, it's another day. I'm blessed. Nah. It's got to be something that actually happened. Well, um, like I was telling you earlier, um, I was at a doctor's appointment. Um, and one thing that actually made me smile was actually seeing my baby on the bed because I actually had a sonogram. Um, and affirmations, um, I'm just, I like, I, I feel really proud of myself. Like, I'm, I look back at like how I started and see the progress because there are days where you know like we were just talking about where I just don't feel motivated and I'm just like uh, is it even worth it why, should, why am I doing this and then you know then I always look back and see how far I've come and you know I'm always grateful for you know believing in myself and pushing myself even on days where I don't feel motivated to do this but you know I am happy with you know what I'm accomplishing I'm happy with what my nieces and <clears throat> my sons are seeing, you know, they, they see me work from home and um, they understand how important it is to have your own and, you know, I think that in itself it makes it worth it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, what, is, what is this? Do you know yet what it's going to be? This? Yeah, actually I'm having my third boy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. so working on like a whole football team, I guess. So. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, you know, to, yeah. to be an entrepreneur, you know, in, in your children's life. A lot of people f feel like, oh, I want to get my things, my, you know, I want to get my life together before I have children. You know, I want to make sure I am have this amount of money or in this type of situation. It's not always but realistic. It's not realistic at all. I feel like I'm late, um, but that's another story. But <laughs> I, I ain't mad. But um, <laughs> sometimes actually they can be in a lot of in a, for a lot of people, especially for me, they are the inspiration for the me. Push, you know right? what I mean? Yeah. So 
I feel like a lot of what I do is not even for me at this point. It's for them. That's what I like to hear. Like that's what I want to hear. Yeah. Uh, that's what I really enjoy hearing the most is when there are parents who are entrepreneurs and they allow their children to push them because too many times we hear the opposite. Like I would, but you right. know, it's, yeah, that's and I ain't even gonna say the but, but that you know, like I would, yeah. but my, you know, I got to do this with this and it's yeah. like, you and can't it's like, your kids like that. You know, like I think that's very, very important that you, you know, respect the fact that your children can watch you yes. grow because they see them when you was out of work and they have nothing, and they see you grow to this person who can work from home. And that's what I like to hear. I like to hear that, like, you know, yeah. and what, what I'm hearing is, like, your children are going to be better than you, and that's what we want. Like, you know, yeah. your children, is, is, you know, might not have to work because they actually saw you when you went from work to entrepreneur, and now they can just go off from there, from entrepreneur to CEO, you know, right. they can, you know, from entrepreneur to multi-millionaire, whatever. It is, so that's what that's what I have. Like I'm not a parent, but that's what I that's the one of the desires I have. For my child to to start off where I left off. You know, so if I was a millionaire, I want my child to be a multi millionaire, you know, if I was yeah. like striving to be a a rapping singer, a music a music artist and I got to this high in my career, I want them to you know Yeah, go harder like B J Z. Like, you know, if I like basketball, I want you to be LeBron. Like I just yeah. played it, I want you to take it serious, you know. I just did podcasts. I want you to like, you know, direct start movies. A radio yeah, start a radio <laughs> for real. Like that's yeah, that's right. the type of stuff I want to be like. Look at all this I'm doing. This is nothing compared to what you can do. You have to be better than. And me. they have to see that from young, because then they start to understand how important it is to self invest. And I think that's kind of like one of the best benefits about it is that. I can work and I can also bring them with me when I do sipping shops here and I have my whole line set up here my family's here with me you know right. if I'm doing certain events they're there and I think that's like one of the best things because actually seeing what I do at home and then seeing how that translates into like what I do when you know wait I remember you had a little girl with you that was your niece yeah at that event yeah. and I got that's crazy so now I know yeah. <laughs> like and that was family me, and they're like learning how to be yeah. They were with me out in Fulton Street when I do most of my events. Like they're there, just helping, and they're learning. They're learning how to speak and communicate with people. They're learning, you know, the ins and outs. So the niece is actually the one who I think is like I went and inquired about the beard oil with her. Yeah, and then I, I went I to you. To, yeah, I went to you <laughs> to get the like okay to trade, you know, yeah. to barter. But she was the one who sold me. She, yeah. <laughs> now that I remember, yeah, like, like she good. actually sold me and was like, "Yeah, this is good for." So <laughs> yeah, you're doing a really like, good job. They they're learning the business. They know how to talk to people. They know how to like you know explain what the product is for and how to you know grab people's attention and things like that. And I think that's important. And I told them like even if you know you want to do other things, it's, it's important to learn how to communicate with people and um, you know. They've learned so much, and I'm like really proud. I'm really happy to have them, you know, working with me, um, just so they can see what it's like. And you know, they even now are aspiring to do their own things, open their own businesses, and things like that. And I think that's that's kind of like what I would want to happen. That's the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you see what I'm doing now. You know, you know what you, that you can do, that you can do it, and how to do it. And you know that if you need help. So you're doing more than just making beauty products and selling them. You're doing a whole lot of things. You know, you're really like a, like you know, like a, a teaching entrepreneur as well. Like you're providing services yeah, that's, to you know, exactly. providing services, and that's beautiful. I believe in vibrations. I believe you just speaking all of this, all of this beauty. Your son right now is listening. You can hear all of this, and it's gonna come out on another wave. Like yeah. you can come out ready for the world. I believe in vibrations, so like, Definitely. you know, keep it up. Thank you. Um, you can tell the people where to find you. You know, if you got anything coming up, or you know, any, you know, you know your website, your Instagram. If you got any events coming up, or whatever you want to tell them to to follow and keep up with you. All right, cool. So yeah. You guys can um, check out the website first and foremost. It's here on the shirt. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, madewithloveoils.com uh, on Instagram. Um, you can type in madewithloveoils. Just look for this logo. 
Um, I also have a Facebook page made with love oils. You can um, check me out there. Um, December, I have a few events coming up. I'm doing this holiday market in Gowanus. Um, I'm going to post more about it on my social media sites. Um, it's every Saturday in December. Um, and then I always do Kwanzaa events. Um, there's a bunch out here in Bed-Stuy. I, um, I didn't get the flies for those yet, but um, towards the end of December, I'll be most likely at all of those events. Um, and then just really quickly, I just wanted to talk about for two minutes, if you don't mind, um, just us being here at Jeffrey's Beauty Supply. Um, like we mentioned earlier, this is the first store that actually um, carried my products. Um, they were the first ones to believe in me and my products. Um, and right now they're going through um, some hardship. Uh, this location is actually not working out for them as far as like foot traffic. Um, so they're actually looking to relocate. Um, otherwise they would be able, uh, they're going to be forced to close their doors at the end of the month um, permanently. And um, this business has been very, you know, gracious to me and my business and them being here helps to sustain my family and myself and my business and it's an important um, important to me and um, so they have uh, if you go to Jeffrey Beauty Supply on their Instagram or Facebook um, they have a link where you can go to support um, their relocation because um, it's important to help keep black owned establishments open especially in the beauty supply business because there is no lacking in um, the beauty supply industry. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. Um, right now, it's just the location and the fact that, honestly, the Koreans are on a lockout and they are pretty much just um, overpricing to smaller uh, black-owned beauty supply stores, forcing them to pay almost retail to resell for very little profit. So. Um, it's important that we support black owned businesses um, like Jeffrey's Beauty Supply um, and you can find out more information on my Instagram or you can go to their Instagram also at Jeffrey's Beauty Supply and um, you can support in any way you can. You don't have to donate money if you don't have it. You can share the post, share the link um, and just to help raise awareness. Yeah. Thank you. Matter of fact, you know, that's, that's Diane Carter, Maywell Love Oils. And we're out of here, but I just want to definitely take y'all around the store so y'all can see what y'all can support. I mean, this is, you know, very important to us as a people. We need to make sure that we're supporting each other, you know, so check it out. For me, look at this big store in Brownsville, black on the spot. We got to make sure we hold it down and keep each other here. I mean, where your stuff at? I mean, like, we got to support. Y'all can donate something. Y'all can come buy some stuff. We can get ready. Mm -hmm. This is a few of her 30-something products right here. Yeah. There's no better feeling than like coming here and like stocking the shelves up with my very own products. Get the whip shea, the liquid black soap. Mm -hmm. This is Liddy because this is what I use. I use Chris Do deodorant because any of the deodorant, I don't care if it's say vegan, I don't care what it is, I can't use any other deodorant. It, my arm will rash up. Mm -hmm. I can only use this. I only use Chris deodorant. Um, I'm saying your lavender and bamboo moisturizing hair softener right there. Keep your joints softy. You know what I mean? Uh, and this is actually, this is another uh, black-owned okay. um, business who's uh, located in Texas, but, you know, they actually sell this his is, product out here also. This is in Black Man's Camry's cr so Creations. Black you feel me? Yeah, Healthy yeah. hair treatment. Mm -hmm. It's your scalp right, you feel me? It starts with the scalp. You feel me? So, we got to... Definitely keep our businesses open right here. So this is on, what's the address? 1709 St. Marks. 1709 St. Marks in Brownsville, Brooklyn, Ocean Hill. Yeah. 